Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be looking at your flap motor. This is a 12 volt motor. It's in all the airplanes, the two and the four place. The motors are very similar. Most of the issues that we see revolve around the brushes being worn, but we're going to take this 12 volt flap motor, remove it from the assembly. We're going to take it all apart, and we're going to let you look at the inside. And just for reference, this is a 12 volt motor made in April of 1978 off of a Tiger. So stay tuned for some more fun. So we would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Now we've shown in videos before of the flap motor assembly and the wiring harness and how the flap switch fixed to it. And it's a fairly complicated assembly, but you know, we want good years of service out of it. And that's the flap motor sitting right there heading to the worm drive. That we also see things that when we have people who don't keep the drain holes in the back of their airplane keen, then what you have is you have debris clogging those holes and when it rains, you have water, covers the flap motor, and you have a defining line on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this nice looking flap motor that's just not lowering the flaps at all against an air load. And we put, the, we put it on a voltmeter and we uh, applied power to it. And we found out that it did work, but the voltage drop was down to about 10 something volts. When you put it in operation, it was nine something volts. If you put an ohm meter across the legs of the motor, we found Found out that it had high resistance so what could cause high resistance well we don't have good contact with the brushes against the commutator there could be debris or other stuff in there so we're gonna disassemble this motor completely we're gonna run through some of this fairly quickly for you but we're gonna go ahead and take it apart we're gonna look at all the components we're gonna examine them we're gonna look at a diagram of a typical 12 volt motor and how it applies to our airplane the one thing that you see here in our flat motor when we finally get it disassembled is we will have a capacitor and all that does is buffer the voltage going to the commutator when it's rotating for the motor to operate. So ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned while we pull this motor apart. It's not a whole lot of hardware. Those are uh, 5 16 little bolts, I'm sorry, 5 30 second bolts on the back of the flat motor. Um, the other ones were 3 8 inch where they mount to the flap assembly. So it's not complicated hardware. You can get most of this with just a small pair of vice grips. I'm sorry, a small pair of channel locks, um, a pair of needle nose, and a small wrench set and a screwdriver. So not, again, complicated. Now, don't lose your hardware. The star washers that hold the whole assembly together, the long through bolts that go through there, those are outside star washers, and they are one-time star washers. We're just going to clean this and put it back together, take it to the airport, put it on the um, laboratory power supply, measure the resistance and all, and see how it operates. But we can tell you it's not going to be perfect because we need new brushes. But now let's take a look at a typical motor. There's a shaft that runs through there that applies a rotational force to run the motor. There's a commutator at the other end. And that has little divisions that allow it to contact a brush on one side, a brush on the other to transfer the flow of electricity through it, activates one of the arcs in the electromagnet in there against the permanent magnet on the outside, and that is the motive force that turns the motor and makes it go round and round and round. Okay, we're having... A little bit of luck here disassembling it so now we can finally pull it apart and what you want to be careful of when you go to pull it apart is that commutator and armature it's sitting between permanent magnets so it's going to want to fly to one side or the other so there's the armature and the permanent magnet in the case we've already taken off the cap which just has a bearing for the shaft and out it pops now when you do that and you do it all assembled like that when the brushes come flying out uh, because they're no longer constrained by the commutator and you go ahead the springs pop out they're not going to go anywhere they're going to be in that little can then what you just want to do is carefully push the bottom off unseat it from out of the bottom of the can and then you'll be able to see where everything goes including the brushes the brush springs and the contacts and the capacitors down in there so it's not hard to do you just want to make sure that when you put a shaft down there to push the bottom off out of its indent that you don't want to hit anything critical again not complicated at all as you just saw it just came right off and it will want to grab your magnet now, those are the two permanent magnets inside of what we call the can and that keeps it all rigid when the shaft rotates and then in the bottom you have where your two spring channels are the two spring the two brushes that are 
uh, soldered to the post. You have a positive and a negative. And with the capacitor, it pulses the electricity through the commutator, getting one of those arcs okay, so become a magnet, sure. energizing that ferrite cord, That's and then being magnet, pulled against the real lines. magnet. And that is the motor rotational force that makes the motor want to spin in one direction. By the way, and if you reverse assembly. the direction, uh, positive, and negative, negative, the positive the on your power your supply, the motor will spin and reverse, which is how we get our motors to do what they do anyway. But anyway, there's a good look at the channels and the springs well, and the brushes. Now, like we are going to go ahead and way, ta finish taking this all the way apart and bring it in for better lighting. And then we're going to go ahead and look at it under, under that good lighting. And we're going to clean it so you can kind of see. But here's how the assembly is all goes back together and the brushes all pull against the commutator right there as you can see it's a little difficult working around that magnet when you go to reassemble but you only have to do it one time and then all the hard work can go back so again let's go back and move into the inside and take a better look at some of the components that are inside of this thing again the long two through bolts go through channels and the permanent magnets and you'll fix it on the outside with star washers and the hardware to proper tension and then check it to make sure it rotates these things once you clean them and lubricate the bearings um, that's about it for another 40 years so stand by Now we've got it all the bits and pieces and now we're going to take a look at the parts that will have some debris on them. That's going to be the faces of the brushes and it's going to be the commutator and we're going to clean those with Q-tips. We also have a Kleenex. We're using alcohol isopropyl and we're just going to see what kind of debris might be on there from rotation. That's the brush material wearing and the copper on the commutator wearing a little bit. So anyway, you want to very carefully clean those. Again, those brushes are soldered uh, to the board, so you don't want to disturb that. But look at the debris that's just coming off the brushes. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to reverse the Q-tip, dip it in the other side, and now we're going to go after the commutator. Now the commutator is very sharp edged pieces of copper slab. There's not a complete ring around there. So you want to make sure that when you lightly go around it in a circular motion with the Q-tip, you don't snag it. Uh, then after you do that to get the surface debris off, then you come back and you stroke it along, along the axis of the shaft so that you don't in effect with the sharp edges of those plates in the commutator. You don't want to disturb anything in the system. But anyway, you'll be amazed at the debris that comes off. And again, that affects how it rides on there, um, the contact it's making, and the electrical uh, motive force, the 12 volts that it's applying, and that will make your motor spin. And when you have things like this, that the brushes are not seating properly, not being pushed against it hard, and you have debris there along with maybe some dirty bearings and stuff then the motor is going to be working under load and it's not going to be putting out the force that it would normally do and that's why your flaps don't want to come down under an air load so I don't recommend that you go take your flap motor apart and clean it periodically. That is not anything on the annual inspection checklist. But if you're a frugal garment owner, I know that people who are starting to see their, their flaps are failing and don't want to send it off and have the motor overhauled or exchange it, then they will take it apart. They will clean it and reassemble it and find a mechanic to sign it off if it even goes in the logbooks. But anyway, that's the commutator all clean. Now let's take a look at the parts that you hardly ever see, the 1032 nuts and the star washers. Those are outside star washers and they are a one-time use for fastening the shafts that go through the motor, those two long through bolts that go from one end cap to the other and hold the motor together. On that one end cap there are two studs and that's for bolting it into the assembly. But here's the armature and here's the commutator under better lighting so you can kind of get a feel for what it looks like. So again, those are ferrite cores around there and they will be attracted to the permanent magnet in the can. The can has two magnets, one on either side and two 
crevices for the through bolts to go through to hold it all together and that's on this particular version and believe me all 12 volt motors and even 24 volt motors are all pretty much put together the same those posts sticking out on the end right there that's for holding it to the assembly with the worm drive and those were the long through bolts that go all the way through come through the end plate here and hold on the other side now we do have a capacitor on either leg and this prevents um, the electricity from flowing in the wrong direction and buffering it when it does as the commutators wrote through the uh, brushes and apply the 12 volts to different uh, the different windings on that motor and then here are the springs again when you're taking it apart you want to make sure the springs are contained in something or you have a rag over the area because they will fly out and you will spend quite a bit of time trying to find them now they're not very strong springs it's not they want to really grip and wear because the stronger the spring is the more that brush is going to wear against the commutator and you don't want any lubrication there at all you just want to keep them clean when you put the new brushes in and then here's all the bits and just one grand shot the can the bolts the bottom plate the armature the hardware and then here it is all reassembled back together with the brushes in place so you can kind of get a feel for how the brushes contact the commutator how much of an arc of the commutator they take because they will cross between two different panels which is two different arcs affecting the magnet and rotation and that's why you have the capacitors to help buffer all of that but there it is spinning in there as you can see not a lot to it but that's how that part works right there and then finally we get to where we're at the end and the motor goes back together again we're going to take it to the shop and we're going to reassemble it so ladies and gentlemen we hope you found this really detailed look inside of your flap motor useful and informative thanks so much for watching you notice the cats had to come out and look at certain stages as we were doing thanks for watching and have a great day flying your grumman You know, forget buying expensive toys for your kittens and cats. Um, we find that just taking the aircraft spruce box and the paper on the tile floor is more than enough amusement for them for hours.